to sum up, by all appearances, a Koch operation funded legal theory supported by Koch operation funded amici is about to be deployed by Koch operation funded lawyers to convince Koch operation funded justices to achieve a long standing goal of Koch industries the ability to pollute more easily and more cheaply to twist American law through those techniques for that purpose is a deeply degraded thing. It would be a tragedy for the American people, but you know what? It's the scheme in a nutshell. It's why all the effort was put together. The hundreds of millions of dollars were spent to capture and control the United States Supreme Court for the benefit of a small cabal of creepy billionaires. Let me get to the point at hand. I am back now for the uh, 27th time to call attention to the right-wing billionaire's scheme to capture and control our Supreme Court and connect it to things that are going on at the court right now. The billionaire elite that captured our Supreme Court wants to use it to attack Americans' ability, our ability as a people, through regulation to protect our own health and safety. And the goal mostly is to benefit the big polluters in their midst. A word on regulation. As modern innovations have raised the standard of living in the United States and around the world, and corporations have grown to international behemoths, and billionaires have claimed for themselves a larger and larger share of the world's wealth, regulation has come to have a very important role. Big corporations' well-known motive to maximize dangers, inevitably, to maximize profits, I should say, inevitably causes dangers to society. If you think of a big industrial plant that, without oversight, uh, would leach chemical byproducts into the soil and water, poison wells, and spread cancer, you've got an idea of why regulation is needed. Over many decades, Congress created administrative agencies to perform this task, staffed by scientists and other experts to use their expertise to manage and rein in these industrial dangers. The American system of regulation made our society safer and more prosperous, period. As heavy equipment and dangerous chemicals came to mines and factories and construction sites, regulators implemented workplace safety standards. The meatpacking jungle led to sanitation requirements in production facilities. Automobile highway carnage produced seat belts and airbags. Stock jobbing boiler rooms and insurance fraud provoked regulation to protect investors and insureds. What's been the result? Workplace illnesses, injuries, and deaths declined. Foodborne illnesses that used to kill thousands of people per year have been practically wiped out. Highways are no longer carnage. Boilers rarely explode. And medications and stock offerings and insurance policies are all safer for consumers. And by the way, in this environment of safety, corporate profits soared. The S&P 500 has returned in excess of 7,800 percent. Clean air and clean water and safe food and cars are actually good for business. Regulation is good. Regulation is a public good. But a gang of recalcitrant polluters is in the crew that captured the Supreme Court. And they want not only to pollute for free, they want to pollute without expert regulation. Well, even Republican Congresses wouldn't go for that. 
So they turned to their captured, unaccountable court. First, they got the court to create a brand new so-called major questions doctrine, basically a too big to regulate escape hatch for big polluters. And now they're using their captured court to attack another precedent, the legal doctrine known as Chevron deference, which is pretty simple. Unless the law is clear, on technical matters, courts defer to the agency experts. This arrangement makes sense. Congress isn't suited and usually hasn't the expertise to make fine technical determinations. So to prop up their attack on this common sense principle, polluters have invented some fake arguments. A few years ago, these industries and their right-wing front groups began arguing that Chevron deference has a separation of powers problem. It may make all the sense in the world, but it has a separation of powers problem that courts must attend to because, they say, it gives unchecked and disproportionate power to the executive branch. The problem with that argument is that it is just not true. It is flat out false. Congress's legislative grant of administrative authority to agencies comes with significant checks and balances. I'm not going to go into all the details, but for starters, agency heads are appointed by an elected president and confirmed by an elected Senate. And agencies may not promulgate rules willy-nilly. They have to take public notice and comment. And agency rules are subject to judicial review to make sure they're consistent with the rules and the Administrative Procedures Act and the public information and comment and the evidence. That helps make sure that regulations by law have to be both reasonable and consistent with the evidence and the facts. And in Congress, when all that is going on, we exercise direct oversight over these administrative agencies. We do it through our oversight committees that have specific jurisdiction on specific agencies. We do it through the appropriations process. Very often you see appropriations riders to control agency behavior. And we do it through the expedited review of the Congressional Review Act, which we're seeing a lot of now in the Senate. And it allows for a very quick review by Congress of a challenged agency rule. And in fact, Congress has used that rule to over, has used that process to overturn agency rules 20 times since 2001. There's a whole ecosystem of secretly funded corporate front groups that manage this whole process. It seems complicated, but it's less complicated than a piano, and people know how to play pianos. Now, much of this is funded by the Koch brothers. Now one is deceased, but the Koch Industries political influence operation, which is a powerful right-wing, dark-money political network. Look at this Loper case. The lawyers who represent the petitioners in this case are working for free, supposedly, ostensibly for a public interest law firm called Cause of Action. This supposed public interest law firm discloses no donors and does not report any employees. As the New York Times discovered, in this article, those lawyers actually work for Americans for Prosperity, the central battleship of the Koch brothers' political front group Armada. That Armada, by the way, is very cozy with some of the far-right justices of the Supreme Court. Indeed, ProPublica has reported that Justice Clarence Thomas has repeatedly flown out to serve as the celebrity draw for the Koch political operations fundraisers. 
including funding that landed at Americans for Prosperity. As is now standard practice in these cases, a flotilla of dark money front groups appeared as amici curiae, purporting to be independent, but actually with enormous common funding and orchestration. These front groups are frequent flyers that spout anti-regulation arguments before the Supreme Court regularly, like, for instance, the major questions doctrine I mentioned earlier. From the creation of these doctrines in right-wing hothouses, through their amplification via right-wing front groups, to their insertion into legal arguments by right-wing amici, the common thread through the whole process is massive secret funding from billionaire special interests.